So, today I want to talk about something I noticed in the Fear Street movies. I loved how the Fear Street movies, released by Netflix, um, were kind of a short history of slasher movies. Specifically, there's two examples that I want to talk about to show that not only are the Fear Street movies imitating these like really specific setups from classic horror movies, but they're kind of not doing it very well. First thing, let's watch um, just this clip from Scream, 1996, Wes Craven. As you see um, in that clip, Ghostface chases down Drew Barrymore um, and grabs her by the mouth and then stabs her in the chest. And it looks really real and really visceral. And part of the reason that it looks really real is because we start way back with this longer than a medium shot. It's almost a long shot. Um, and we see them actually running across the lawn. Barrymore is really running. The ghost face is really chasing her. Okay, so let's watch this short sequence from the opening of um, Fear Street 1994. Aha! So I was sure when I watched this that it was imitating the opening of Scream. Ghostface is chasing her in the mall, but did you notice? They're all medium shots. They're all kind of waist ahead, and there's a lot more cutting. Um, and the way that Ghostface grabs her and stabs her is completely different. It doesn't feel as visceral. There's also a cut to show where he stabs her in the back, which is, I think, probably more convenient in terms of like a prop situation and a, like how real you want to get it without putting the actress at risk. That sequence of Maya Hawk being chased and killed I think it's intended to be like the sequence of Barrymore getting chased and killed, but it's not the same. Partly because of where the camera is put, so you don't get a sense of the menace, um, the running and the running and the running and chasing that happens. Um, but also because uh, there's a cut there to show where the knife is going in her back, as opposed to kind of this all-in-one. The killer, he does such a good job, and the fact that he's really competent is part of why he's so scary for the rest of the movie. Um, so that's an example of a kind of, I'm going to say a kind of a riff, not an exact um, duplication of something from a classic horror film, but a, a riff off of something from a classic horror film that just isn't the same as the original. Um, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's worse. I don't think that the different thing that it's doing is more sound aesthetically. Okay, so here is another thing just like that from later in the film, towards the end. First, we're going to watch what it copied from The Shining, 1980, Stanley Kubrick. Here you go. What we're going to talk about is the camera and the axe, the, the, that sort of whip back and forth of the camera that's chasing the axe as it bites into the door. Um, I let the scene go on because part of the reason that Kubrick attaches the camera, not literally, but um, the path of the camera to the axe is to give you a sense of how hard Jack is hitting with the axe and how those blows are frightening. And then when we cut to the inside of the bathroom, obviously Shelley Duvall is also conveying how hard those axe blows are hitting, how frightening it is. Of course, part of what's frightening is that he's her husband and also we've been waiting for two hours for something to happen in this movie, so that helps too. But the camera effect of that is partly you know, the, the feeling of the weight of the axe and the heaviness of it hitting the wood. There's other stuff going on in the scene. 
a lot of other stuff like the fisheye when you get behind the wood and it, a lot there's a lot but um, we're gonna stick to the motion of the axe here is the scene from Fear Street 1994 we have this killer um, doing the same thing and the camera sort of does the same thing <laughs> This is sloppy. <laughs> like, there's really no other word for it. He's moving the axe so quickly um, that it's hard for the camera to chase it in the same way that Kubrick's camera can chase Jack Nicholson's axe. It's not doing it to kind of serve a purpose in the world of the film. It's doing it to copy a very famous, very effective scene from another horror movie. The reason that this was so effective in The Shining is not carried over into the scene from Fear Street. Instead, it's just showing a guy hitting a door with an ax to try and get in. Um, he's not breaking down his marriage, metaphorically, the way that Jack is. It's just, it's just an empty imitation. And that's frustrating, especially because it's not executed especially well. What are you gonna do? Those, the Fear Street movies are fun. They were clearly inexpensive. If you want a slasher that is kind of composed of all the other slashers that have come before, they're great movies. They're a little long. I'll close with just another little example. Um, in that sequence that we saw earlier with Maya Hawk getting killed by the ghost face, um, she rips the mask off of the guy and it shows the guy. His identity is not really like important in the same way that the identity of the ghost face killers in um, Scream is kind of at issue for the rest of the film. So in Scream, something a little different happens, and it's a really beautiful camera move making use of darkness. Um, so check it out. Hope to see you again.